Trigger warning. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Hello if you're new. Some disclaimers before the video begins. All accusations provided are alleged until proven otherwise. Do not send hate to anyone mentioned and links in the description are for educational purposes only. Today we're going to be talking about Kevin Puya. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. I'm not 100% but he is a SoundCloud rapper. He has been accused of orchestrating a gang rape of a fan of his. See this? This is true. About five years ago, Puya and two of his friends raped me, one of which giving me chlamydia. When I finally had the courage to out him for what he did to me, he sent me an illegal cease and desist letter trying to shut me up and sign my rights away. The attorney who sent me this letter was a criminal defense attorney, not a civil rights attorney, who has come close to being disbarred completely for violations for practicing law. After I came out with my story, 12 other girls came to me with their stories about Puya and other artists such as Fat Nick. If you still support these artists after knowing what they have done, please do not follow me. Please do not contact me. I have been dealing with this for five years now and getting the help that I need in therapy. I am finally at a point where I can talk about it fully. So this article that I will be reading off of goes into a little bit more of Puya's history. So we will start with that. In October of 2013, a skinny white kid named Kevin Puya uploaded a video to YouTube called How to Get Free Donuts. The video opens on Puya looking like a preteen Travis Birkenstock facing the camera. Check it out, check it out, he says, this is how you get free donuts from Dunkin' Donuts, no money needed, over a piano soundtrack straight from The Sims. The camera follows Puya and a friend as they order a at a drive through window, grab a box of glazed, and speed off without paying, cackling out of the parking lot. Miami rapper Puya's early YouTube series, Nick and Puya Show, produced with his best friend and longtime collaborator, Fat Nick, was filled with pranks like this one. Silly, unscripted, low budget, funny only to those involved. But nearly two years later, after Puya sc scored thousands of streams on SoundCloud, slightly more body mass and a coveted spot in south florida's rap scene his he still cited his youtube show as the start of his career but last september amidst their career boom and just a fortnight before harvey weinstein's sexual misconduct allegations triggered a cataclysm of hashtag me too movements the rapper's reputation took a turn for the serious when a 22 year old tattoo artist filed a police report accusing Puya and two members of his entourage of sexual assault. And that is from the TikTok user that I showed in the beginning. That is, in his statement to the Daily Beast, a spokesperson wrote on Puya's behalf that the rapper categorically denies engaging in non-consensual -consen sexual conduct with anyone. He claims never to have had sexual contact with the accuser and to be prepared to take her allegations to court. Quote, Mr. Puya is confident that a basic investigation of the facts will reveal that these claims are false, the spokesperson wrote, and once the evidence is reviewed, these allegations will be determined to have been made by a disingenuous individual that is seeking attention under the umbrella of the hashtag MeToo movement, end quote. The police report was filed on September 24, 2017. The MeToo movement took off after October 5, 2017. Puya tells the host that he often sleeps with fans. We do fuck our fans. If the girl wants to fuck and she's like 18, I'll throw on a condom and I'll fuck her. But only on one condition, that they give up their phones. He arrived at the rule after one girl tried to take a picture of him in the shower. I just came out the shower and broke her phone. Once the phones are gone, he's down for anything. Me and another friend have gangbanged hoes. Puya says we gangbanged an Asian. That was fun. Now we're going to go into the report of the accuser. Ellie, a tattoo artist who prefers to go by only her nickname, has lived in Richmond, Virginia for about three years. She's tall with long pitch hair, which I think it's a, it meant to say pink, dahlia bites, twin nose piercing, and proof of her profession on most limbs. She's big into music, mostly hardcore, some metal, not much rap. But in 2016, she started listening to Fat Nick, which is one of Puya's friends at the suggestion of her boyfriend and eventually found Puya. 
She liked what she heard, occasionally tweeting out his lyrics. Still, in the world of underground hip-hop, she preferred one of Puya's peers, another white Florida MC called Ghost Main, who got his name from a head of stringy silver hair. Ghost Main came up making hardcore and doom metal before moving into rap, but held on to vestiges of his old sound. Ellie loved the combo. He was her favorite rapper at the time. So in spring 2017, when she saw that Ghost Main was playing with Puya and Fat Nick at Shaka's Live, a popular venue in the nearby city of Virginia Beach, Ellie bought herself a ticket and a VIP pass for an after show meet and greet. Going to concerts alone wasn't new for her. When Ellie couldn't convince anyone to make the commute to Virginia Beach, she often bought solo tickets and made plans to crash with local friends. She knew a lot of people in the music scene and usually ran into familiar faces. This show was no different. On the night of April 18th, an old acquaintance spotted her in the crowd, a 20-something named Josh Howell, whom she met over Facebook a year or so prior. They talked near the bar, though Ellie didn't drink. She had been straight edge for over three years. When the concert ended, they stood chatting until attendants ushered non-VIP patrons outside. The three performers stood with a photographer on stage while fans waited in the seating area for their turn to approach. They had all the girls come on first, Ellie told the Daily Beast. I was the last to go up. Once on stage, Puya immediately recognized her as a Ghost Main fan. Ellie said, you just here to see Ghost Main, he told her. He likely guessed this from her appearance. I dress in a dark style. People call me goth, but I really hate that term. I was wearing a black bodysuit, fishnets, black vans. I was in all black. I'm covered in tattoos. She told Puya she also liked his music, but gravitated toward Ghost Main, chatting with him briefly. After the group posed for a photo, Puya spoke to Ellie again, this time inviting her to hang with the musicians at their hotel, promising more FaceTime with Ghost Main. Ellie agreed. I kind of fangirled a little bit, she told the Daily Beast. I was kind of awkward about it. I was just like, wow, definitely. Puya told her to talk to the guy running their merchandise table to flirt with him and to give him her phone number. Once they had meet and greeted the rest of their fans, Puya said he would text her. When Ellie agreed, the rapper alerted his friend with a bird call. It was just like a caw, she said. I'm assuming that was their like, hey, this girl is going to come backstage signal. Ellie exchanged numbers with the merch guy and went outside where Howell was waiting. They sat in his car and then headed to his apartment to kill time. In a statement given to the Virginia Beach Special Victims Unit five months later, Ellie detailed the following. According to her iMessage records from that night, Ellie left Howell's apartment for the hotel at 12.58 a.m. 20 minutes later, she arrived by skateboard. Parking in Virginia Beach is notoriously difficult after hours, so she had found a spot far away and headed for room 418, where the merch guy told her to meet the group. But on her way down the fourth floor hallway, Ellie overheard Puya's distinctive draw coming from a different door. I knocked, Ellie said. I thought maybe the merch guy had fat fingered it and put down the wrong room number, Puya answered but he told her she'd come to the wrong place. He led her across the hall to another room, which wasn't 418 either. Just before they entered the second room, Puya asked Ellie for her phone. He explained his reasoning, the shower photo, just as he had on no jumper, quote unquote, in my head, that made sense. She told the Daily Beast. I was like, okay, yeah, I understand. When she handed over her cell, Puya stored it in the microwave. That exchange took place roughly around 1.25 a.m., Ellie said, because she no longer had her phone at 1.29 a.m. When a text from the merch guy arrived, a message she wouldn't see for several hours, you down to hook up. Ellie and Puya entered the room where two members of his crew, whom she later identified through a phone search at the Virginia Beach Police Department, were hanging out. They all sat for a bit, the lean rapper perched on a dresser, scrolling through his phone. Ellie plopped on the bed, waiting. I was just like, okay, this is boring. After a while, the two friends left to smoke. In their absence, Puya and Ellie talked about tattoos. He only had one at the time. It was bad, Ellie said. They chatted about sobriety. Like Ellie, Puya steers clear of drugs. He doesn't even like weed. 
they bonded over hardcore. When the two boys returned, Ellie started to get itchy in her fishnets. A former stripper and nude model, Ellie told the Daily Beast that she is fairly comfortable in her own skin. When her tights started to bother her, she felt fine taking them off. But once she did, she said Puya steered his tattoo talk towards her body. He started talking about my tattoos, Ellie said. I have my butt tattooed, and he started grabbing my ass. I started feeling really weird and really uncomfortable. Soon, all three guys got involved in the conversation. They repeatedly asked about her body modifications, her tattoos, her gauges, her piercings. At one point, I was telling Puya about my piercings, and I have my tongue pierced twice, and he said that he wanted to feel that on his dick, Ellie said. Puya added, and so do my friends. Up till then, Ellie hadn't directly addressed the rapper's come-ons. She told the Daily Beast that she just sat there awkwardly and didn't really respond. But after that comment, Ellie spoke up. I was like, I've never done that before. She said, I made it very clear that I was not comfortable with the whole situation. But he was like, it's okay, there's always a first for everything. Ellie has not publicly detailed what happened next, but in her, both her interview with the Daily Beast and her statement to Virginia Beach Police Department, she alleged the men repeatedly told her to get naked and then initiated vaginal and oral sex with her against her will. She claimed that they did not begin using physical force, but rather ignored visible signs of distress while reiterating that there was always a first for everything. The 23-year-old said she believed the men had a specific order to go in because they seemed to agree that Puya would go first and one of his friends would go last. During oral, that was when the friend was forcing it, Ellie said. That's when I started crying and pulled away. They were not having it. The alleged victim suspected that order had to do with the fact that none of the men wore condoms. A week later, she explained an SCD test returned positive for chlamydia. Later, after Puya left the room, Ellie snatched her phone from the microwave. At 3.40 a.m., she texted Howell that the weirdest shit just happened and asked him to pick her up. My car is like a good walking distance away, she wrote. I just want to leave and go to sleep and never speak of tonight. So now we'll be reading a post that Ellie posted on her Facebook. So, some of you already know this, but for the first time ever, I actually want to make it public and post about it. I know there are going to be the few who don't believe me or want to believe me, but I'm going to tell it anyways. Back in April, I went to see Ghostbane, Fat Nick, and Puya at Shaka's in Virginia Beach. I was super excited and bought VIP passes when I met them. Puya asked me to come back to the hotel with them. I should have known from there it was not going to be a good time for me, but alas, like anyone in that situation, I was excited and wanted to go, so I went. When I was there, I went to the wrong room. I went to the room because I heard Fat Nick's voice, so I had thought maybe the guy gave me the wrong room number. I look back at it now and think maybe if I had gone to the one he gave me, that things wouldn't have ended up the way they did. Puya answered the door, asked for my phone because he, quote unquote, he didn't want me taking photos of him, like I was some sort of paparazzi and took me to another room where him, his producer, and his merch guy took advantage of me. I'm not going to go into detail because typing this out alone is really hard for me, and I don't really want to post about it until now. I just remembered feeling so disgusted with myself after it happened, and I wish I had never gone to that hotel. A lot of people I know are fans of Puya, and I hate seeing his name on anything. And again, I know there are going to be those people who don't believe me, but it needs to be said. Also, when it happened, he was still with Coco or whatever. So yeah, uh, that's it. Thanks. So now this is going to be a different article talking about how Puya responded to this. He denied any wrongdoing. Earlier this week, a disturbing report from the Daily Beast, which is the one I had just read, revealed that Florida rapper Puya was accused of sexual assault last year. A 23-year-old tattoo artist named Ellie claimed that Puya and two members of his crew forced her to have oral and vaginal sex against her will in April 2017. Although she ultimately opted not to press charges, she did file a police report a few months later. The report contains a handwritten statement and iMessage screenshots, as well as lyrics from his 2013 song Indigo B with Denzel Curry. On the track, Puya raps a series of disturbing lyrics about a sexual encounter with a woman. Four in the morning, on top of that, it started storming. 
and we had a hole in the trunk. She drunk as fuck. Don't even know if she's breathing, but I don't. But really, I don't give a fuck, cause I already fucked. Pass her to my homie. Took advantage of her body, cause she's nothing but a slut. The song is from several years before the incident and isn't about Ellie, but the Daily Beast reports that she submitted the lyrics as part of her police report. It's just the latest example of rap lyrics being used by the criminal justice system. Last year, police used Young Dolph's lyrics as the basis for an arrest warrant for Black Youngsta, and hip-hop lyrics have often been cited in criminal trials. Through a spokesperson, Puya denied any wrongdoing. Quote unquote, Mr. Puya is confident that a basic investigation of the facts will reveal that these claims are false. The rep wrote to the Daily Beast. Quote unquote, once evidence is reviewed, these allegations will be determined to have been made by a disingenuous individual that is seeking attention under the umbrella of the hashtag MeToo movement. Although a police report was filed, no charges have been brought against Puya. So that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know how you're feeling in the comments. Subscribe and press the bell to see my next video. Stay safe and stay educated, everyone. Thank you.